on sinners sean here and i am introducing this week's episode and it was fantastic we sat down with josh and justine from the scream queens podcast one of my favorite podcasts that are out there i know you know it because you listen to it but if you don't know about it well you gotta correct yourself they travel the country they've all kind of like they're traveling the world now they've been to barcelona and they've been to new mexico and what they do is they travel and they talk about a movie that is based in that location so for instance uh they went to barcelona and they talked about rec r-e-c you know the, the fantastic found footage zombie movie and they went to tulum mexico and they talked about the ruins ah, how could you even do that i'd be freaked out um they just have so much fun their their latest episode they did what lies beneath and they were in arkansas and it was just um, an absolute blast. So, by all means, please check them out. It's well worth your time. Um, it is probably one of the best movie-based podcasts out there. And it's not just about the travel stuff. They also do first-time watch reactions with commentary and they're best friends and they're so much fun and they're so funny. So, you're going to get a sense of that as we talk about Alfred Hitchcock's 1963 classic, The Birds! I actually don't think any birds make that sound during the movie, but it felt right. Um, we get into what a colossal POS Alfred Hitchcock is, which I don't think he can avoid these days, because he is. I'm looking at you, Alfred. Sizzle, sizzle. And um, we get into a lot of the uh, movie itself, because it's kind of like this weird um, black and white cookie, where one half is this uh, kind of, you know, middle of the road, love triangle drama for the first half by the way one of those points of the triangle is the guy's mom <laughs> and then the second half of the movie is just flat out nature run amok uh the birds you know pack 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 and all that good stuff so anyway i hope you enjoy the conversation i know shannon and i did and uh all right let's get to it scream queen's Podcast, Josh and Justine and Albert Hitchcock's The Birds. Oh my goodness, you've got your chocolate and my peanut butter. What a fantastic combination. The bird attacks have subsided for the time being. Bodega Bay seems to be the center, though there are reports of minor attacks on Sebastopol and a few on Santa Rosa. Most of the townspeople have managed to get out. Well, there are still some isolated pockets of people. Birds are not aggressive creatures, miss. I wonder if you could help me. They bring beauty into the world. I said I wonder if you could help me. It is mankind, rather. Yes, what is it you're looking for, sir? Lovebirds. Lovebirds, sir? Who insists upon making it difficult for life to exist upon this planet. What were the crows after at the school? What do you think they were after? I think they were after the children. For what purpose? To kill them. Someone there? Who is it? Look. No, it seemed to swoop down at you deliberately. These birds attacked. Hey, sinners, I'm Shannon. And I'm Sean. And this is Sinful Cuts. <laughs> sinners, tonight we have something special because, as you just heard, we have got the Screen Queens podcast on. Now, this podcast came onto my radar, of course, 
you know, I, I, when I got involved with horror podcasts, when Shannon and I got involved in horror podcasting, what I did was I reached out to all of the of the horror podcasts. Reached out, I started listening to, and I started cribbing shamelessly from all of them. <laughs> Your podcast is probably the number one podcast that I shamelessly crib from because you have nothing but fun, nothing but fun. It's infectious. It when. When I'm listening to you two, I picture myself in the car. Again, immediately going to make it awkward. I picture myself in the car with you, and I'm in the back seat, and you two are in the front. And I'm like, so where are we going, gang? (laughs) Such a good time. But I was telling Josh and Justine before we started that I'm a little upset. They (laughs) recorded an episode in Barcelona where they talked about wreck which happens to be one of my favorite movies. But as they're going through it, and I'm listening to this in the car, they start talking about the fact that they may be getting mugged. And I start responding to what I'm hearing. Now, granted, the rational part of my brain is like, this this happened ages ago. (laughs) They've already recorded and edited this. But in my mind, it's happening in real time. And I start screaming at my radio. I mean, you got to take me through what the hell was going on in the moment when that was happening. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still upsetting well, you two. Kind yeah, of like, we need to know, yeah. <laughs> need to know more. <laughs> it, it was like the most perfect mugging that could ever happen. Like before <laughs> anything could escalate, before we even realized what was happening, the police like surrounded us. So. And Thank kind of God. saved the day. So it was very, the most like serendipitous mugging. Like, yeah. I think the police were staking out that area. It must have been happening every, you know, a lot. And they witnessed and kind of knew what was happening and swooped in. And before anything, I imagine like yeah, CCTV there were, like, three is happening. Guys. <laughs> yeah. I'm breathing yeah. heavy they were, in they my were watching car. that area. It, they must have been because for them to swoop in so quickly. Thank God, though, because I'm like, oh, here we go. Here we, they're going to yeah. get mugged. They're going to they're going to take their passports. I don't know how they're going to get out of the country again. This had happened ages ago, and you were both perfectly safe. But in my mind, it was because it was coming out of the speakers. It was happening in the moment, and I just had such an irrational uh, reaction to it. But this is what I'm talking about. I mean, I get heavily invested in your travels. And in the fun that you guys are having, the most recent episode, uh, Oklahoma for What Lies Beneath. I mean, it's... Yeah, we went to Arkansas. Oh, sorry, Arkansas, not Oklahoma. Oh, Arkansas. right, 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 okay. It's so freaking... So we together. live in Oklahoma, though. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to edit this, and when I say the wrong uh, state, you're just going to hear a voiceover. <laughs> Arkansas. It's, it's going to be very bad. Very bad <laughs> editing. <laughs> you've got to do me a favor, though. Before we get into the birds, though, you've got to take me through how this all came about. This is such a phenomenal idea for a podcast, but it's also kind of the most legendary idea for two friends to have fun. So how did this start? Ages ago. Well, first off, thank you. What you were saying is exactly what we were going for like the whole like we want you to feel like you're on the road with us having fun with us and yeah we just love road trips we love horror movies we were always taking these long drives going places and we had the idea of wanting to do a horror podcast and we're like well why don't we just combine the two talk while we're on the road since that's what we do anyways for the hours that we're on the road and gives us something to talk about gives us a motivation to go somewhere every month and yeah. yeah. It's a little sense of Justine. adventure and, and uh, reminiscing on movies and, and obviously seeing the sights that you're seeing. It's such a cool idea. It's such yeah, a Yeah, we've idea. been doing it for ages and ages. Like since high school, we've been friends. So we've been doing just those kind of classic back road drives and having conversation about movies since we were like 16. And you now know, we're not 16, but I we don't have to talk about how old we are. Could have fooled me. Could have yeah. fooled me. 
<laughs> you guys have been to some incredible places, though. To La Mexico for the ruins. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Salem. Uh, the Witch. You guys were in Salem, Massachusetts, which, by the way, Shannon's going uh, for a couple of days in about a month or so. And she's been mm-hmm. like, I don't know, 400 times. She's going to brag about it. Don't listen to her. <laughs> but- Isn't it so fun? It's yeah. so much fun. <laughs> Did you guys love Tulum? Oh my goodness. Yes. yes. We did nothing but like have soak fun. up the rays, enjoy the all sorts of drinks. And <laughs> yeah. Very, very cool place. It, it comes through. I mean, it just comes yeah. through so great. Just the fun that you guys are having. And, you know, it's, it's also like, you know, I think, I think as a, as a culture here in the States and maybe even worldwide, everybody is so tapped into like a travelogue. Everybody loves to experience someone else's travel. So you get a little bit of that, yeah. but for us and for our audience collectively, the horror people, oh my goodness. I mean, it is just chef's kiss how much fun and how great a job you both do in letting us know about the production, about what happened, about the site, you know, how what it means to where you are. I love all of that. So, you know, you don't need to hear it from me. I'm sure you, you hear it enough, but job well done. It's so good. <laughs> Thank you. You're yeah, very, that's so nice. Oh, you're Me very not, welcome. Especially from fellow podcasts. Yeah. Oh, no, it's, I, I aspire to be like you guys. You guys are just <laughs> doing a phenomenal job. So, all right. We have got 1963's Alfred Hitchcock classic, The Birds, to talk to, about tonight. Um, when I when I reached out to you both, um, you know, I send a list of roughly about 25 movies and you chose the birds. And I'm just curious, what was it about the movie that that resonated with you both? Well, I, OK, I guess like I love Hitchcock, but um, he has a way with a muse. He really does a great job of filming and photographing women. So I think. Uh, just like in the camera, like Tippy looks amazing. Her outfits look like they look incredible. Oh, yeah. Um, so there's all of that. But uh, also just like location wise, um, Bodega Bay being over there, like just north of San Francisco, kind of ideal and very picturesque. So we couldn't really ask for more in a road trip. <laughs> Um, they even bring it up in the movie that you can get there two different ways. You can take the coastal way or you can take the, you know, the, the less adventurous highway. And what's funny is Josh and I were kind of forced to do one way versus the other because of, a um, like a weird, like forest fire that happened, but. (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, yeah, Do a lot of those fires out there. Well, I'm so happy that you did choose the film. Um, as far as Hitchcock goes, you know, it is considered a classic. I don't know. I, I suppose it's it's almost neck and neck with Psycho. I, I guess I would I would say that Psycho probably is uh, resonates more with with horror. You know that that is probably the number one. But this is a very close second. But doing the research for this movie, and we'll get to it. I found that they should make a film about the making of the birds would be a lot more disturbing and horrific than the actual film but again you know we'll get into it as we go along so what i like to do in the beginning is just we do what we call the hard yards and of course it's directed by alfred hitchcock the screenplay is by evan hunter who i found out also wrote under the pseudonym of ed mcbain all these detective novels that i saw it, at um, Brentano's and Walden books as a kid, like there they were just always Ed McBain books around. So it's kind of funny that it turned out to be Evan Hunter. Um, it's based on the the the, the short story of the birds by uh, Daphne de Maurier. I give this mouth, this friggin' Daphne de Maurier. Daphne de Maurier. Oh my goodness! I don't even know if I I I don't even know if I got it the second time. I'm not sure, but anyway. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear it a third time. (laughs) I bet you would. I bet you, you guys are finding out in real time. My co-host is a jerk. You're finding out in real time. (laughs) Hitchcock 
Hitchcock wants this this movie. He's gotta he's gotta make something after Psycho, and he's like, okay, you know what? I like the short story, and the, what he basically does is just strip it for parts because it's it's really the short story in in name and 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 theme only, like mm-hmm. very macro plot points because the original short story uh, takes place in England. Uh, you know, it's a working class farmhand and the ending is very nihilistic and bleak. I mean, the farmhand basically, he survives the attack just like in the movie, but he realizes he's never going to survive a further attack and he sits down and he has a smoke and he's basically like, okay, the next attack, I'm going to die. So, you know, Hitchcock taps into that, but of course, then he just kind of makes it all his own. Um, so a- anyway, we'll, we'll get to, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get to the movie itself. Um, you know, uh, you've got Rod Taylor and Tippi Hendren have their meet cute in the pet store with the lovebirds, you know, I mean, what's as more adorable? Yeah, as you do, what's more adorable than that? And from that point forward, you know, he's a little sassy, she's a little sassy, and then he takes off like the wind. And that basically sets up the catalyst for for what happens next. I mean, she's she's 1963's answer to basically Paris Hilton, and that's not a dig. Just just being truthful, you know, yes. it comes from comes from a rich family. Really doesn't have a job. Is kind of chasing a good time. Is kind of running away from a little bit of a scandal in Rome, and she takes a look at, at Rod Taylor and she's like, "Why not?" And there we go, you know. Yeah. <laughs> So I've been. Yeah, it starts I've been, as like a weird. Run. Yes. Right? Yes. Which that was very on purpose. Yes. That, that's yes. what he wanted. Yeah. He wanted, you know, like he basically wanted to to make it a very cute um, film, and yeah, basically like a rom com. And then he just wanted to swipe it away from you, <laughs> and and just fuck shit up as yeah. you know as Hitchcock yeah. does. <laughs> So and sprinkled in like some weird mommy issues. Yeah. Like, oh, Justin. Oh, we'll get to that. I mean, oh, yeah. all right, guys, you can cuss on this on, on our podcast. So let's just put okay. it out there. Everybody wants to fuck Rod Taylor. Everybody. It's, yeah. Including his mother. <laughs> Bodega, Bodega Bay brings the birds and like everybody who loves Rod Taylor to the yard. Yeah. <laughs> is that a new song <laughs> that might be a new song <laughs> it's really long-winded but <laughs> he has a two-minute interaction with tippy hedron she's like two-hour drive to bodega bay that's nothing <laughs> he gets in her aston martin and jets off where we find out that um uh we got suzanne Plachette had dated him, refuses to leave just in case the off chance that he's feeling lonely one night. <laughs> he gets a job there. <laughs> you know, I'm like, what is even happening in my life? What is going on? And then Jessica Tandy <laughs> comes on the screen and is just like, no one gets my rod but me. And I'm like, I can't even with this movie. It's so insane. The first 53 minutes of this film are a Douglas Sirk melodrama. I didn't even realize that there were birds in this movie yeah. for the first hour. And then, of course, you know, things start to escalate. So anyway, I'm sucking the oxygen out of the room. Please, guys, have at it. What did you think about the Rod Taylor of it all? No, it's such a soap opera. He is definitely, like, he's, like, the bold and the beautiful, um, like, he is every bit of that man that walks in the room and all the ladies are like, oh, yes, fawning over. That's him. Yeah. He was. He was and he him. is. He's like a hot. He's kind of a hot guy. So. He's, mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he really is. I can see he's how mad at he, it. he's got Bodega Bay under his spell, but it got disturbing with jessica tandy but that might be more of a jessica tandy issue yeah he might be in bodega bay but he's my bodega boo (laughs) justine i'm putting that on a fucking t-shirt can you all right i'll 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 do splitsies with you yeah (laughs) oh my god that's great so so tippy hendron jumps in the car and off she goes. And I kind of do love, 
I do love the um, the interaction, you know, the, the the playfulness, and it is a meet cute. And you know, we kind of we do get these rom com vibes. Off she goes, and you know, for the first for the a good half hour of this movie, we're with her. We're completely, uh, you know, embedded in her trying to get her man, but not like that to the point she wants Rod to come to her. And there's that playful interaction where they kind of both know what they want, but they want the other one to say it out loud. Kind of, you know, it's a very, I'm going to show my age here. It's very moonlighting. You know, it's like we, we get that, that intro. <laughs> but then we're introduced to uh the family and this is where i my 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 first question pops up and i want to get your opinion on it i love veronica cartwright she's <laughs> horror royalty but the fact that she's 19 years younger mm-hmm. than rod taylor no one in casting c- could have said maybe we get someone nine years four <laughs> years i don't know it's so weird yeah. <laughs> No, for sure. I mean, I personally, I have a sister that's 12 years older than me, but that's still doable. But, you know, he looks like he's almost 50 in this movie and she's like, what, 10, 12? Yes. So it's, but it's like, I don't know their backstory. I don't know what mom was up to and like who dad is. You know, they never really get into like the family dynamics really. And in a way, it's kind of interesting. You don't see that a lot in movies like that age disparity between siblings but yeah there's still something a little odd about it it just visually like he comes to dinner like in a full suit yeah so i'm just like there is just something going on there's a a huge generational gap that is happening here do we ever talk about their dad like they i don't ever i i never heard them mention Papa at all? Do they allude? Do they mention him being dead? Yeah, oh, he's nothing, dead. right? Yeah, yeah, like I, I think they mentioned one time that yeah. he passed away, but but was it the same dad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. okay. It's just, just okay. <laughs> I'll I'll throw a little bit of cover to the. Birds. They just took a long break. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it was 1963. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'll, th- I'll throw a little bit of cover to the birds. I have a very dear friend who is one of 11 children. She's the youngest and her and the oldest, her older brother is 20 years. They're 20 years apart. Okay. So it can happen. But for fuck's sake, there's 10 kids in between. Wait, you know? Yeah, there's, like, there's nine other there was, children that have happened in, there was, in between. There, that. There's consistency there. Exactly. Exactly. I I joke with her all the time. I'm just like, man, your parents really didn't like to watch TV. (laughs) But random fun fact. So, um, so Veronica Cartwright was actually 12 going on 13. Um, and I, I remember like hearing, cause when I actually watched a documentary, uh, Tippy actually, uh, Tippy Hedren actually gifted her lovebirds. Like as a, as Aww. like like figure them just be a Aww. that'd be a fun gimmick, and uh yeah and Veronica Cartwright uh talks about that in the documentary like yeah like as I they you know they had a whole cake and everything for her like on the set and then she comes out with the actual lovebirds and she's like yeah no these are actually for you now <laughs> oh, so that she is actually, very sweet she actually did get those lovebirds you know birds live such a long time they might still be alive. It's possible. Like parents are like 75. <laughs> I don't know about lovebirds, though, but I know like a lot of those tropical birds live to be like 80 or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You think those birds are still together? They're like, ah, oh, was they uh, 75 years ago? <laughs> One bird saying to the other, I'm so <laughs> sick and tired of your chirping. <laughs> Will you shut up? <laughs> and, the, and the other one is going, what? Huh? Yeah. Uh? <laughs> I had my chance with a raven in 1963 on set, and I ended up with you. <laughs> what do you want? They put us in the same cage. <laughs> Justine, to your toys. The first hour of this movie is a stew of soap opera. 
tropes. Mm-hmm. We've got the the me cute and the romance. Is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? And oh boy, then Jessica Tandy shows up, and she, I mean the. I know, all right, this is embarrassing for me, but I'm going to cop to it. So, I love Jessica Tandy, but I know Jessica Tandy as the sweet old woman from Cocoon and Batteries Not Included. And even though dumb dumb uh, that I am, I saw her name in the credits. I didn't realize the mother was Jessica Tandy for like a half hour after she got on screen. And then I turned into the Leonardo DiCaprio meme where I started pointing at the TV and screaming to nobody in the room. That's Jessica Tandy. That's Jessica Tandy. So I embarrassed and impressed myself at the same time. So I'm just sharing that with you because now we're. Aww. <laughs> I had no idea it was her until I knew it was her. I love her in this film. She's phenomenal as an ice queen. And she kind of really puts Tippy Hedren on her heels. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's just this incredibly delicious melodrama. The first half hour is a rom com, then the next half hour is a melodrama, and then the last hour is, a, is an honest to goodness horror movie. Because then the shit, the shit hits the fan. But I'll be honest with you guys. When we got into the horror movie after the first hour, I was kind of looking back at the melodrama like, I'm going to miss you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> How did you guys feel about it? For first, me, I was like, sorry, I'm waiting for, I don't know if Josh is going to like chime in or not. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know, I know. I know. loud for- block that was coming, but I was like waiting for it to <laughs> 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 like one of those old like grandfather so I was like oh shit <laughs> um, ahead, no I like that, ex- that uh, part of the movie how it is I don't want to say slow burn because what it's presenting is really fun to watch you know you right? have this romance you have the drama with the mom it's not boring at all mm-hmm. and then it just you know throw pulls the rug out under you and becomes like this crazy monster bird horror movie so yeah, I really appreciate like really getting to know the characters and getting to really feel out their dynamics between each other, like especially like the mom and the son and you know you who Tippy is. Like you know, she's supposed to be just this gal about town who you, like you said, like the Paris Hilton of her time can kind of do what she wants, lives, you know, probably off her parents' money and yeah, it's really interesting. It's a cool setup. Yeah. I just like how she kind of like fucks around and finds out. Like she's like, okay, fine, I'm gonna like mess around this this guy and like go up to Bodega Bay and chase him. And maybe she should not have done that. Yeah. <laughs> not at all. No, not at all. I mean, she should have gone across the street from the pet store and just seen whatever's across the street because it does not turn. I mean, let's be honest, guys. I mean, spoilers for a movie from 1963, but at the end of this film, she's damn near catatonic. I mean, it's not a it's not a happy ending for Tippy Hedren. I mean, oh boy, it's not a happy ending in the film. And we'll get to it because, you know, trigger warning for everybody out there. We get into some horrible behavior by Alfred Hitchcock, um, which to this day is alarmingly still kind of brushed aside. When I was going through articles about the, you know, doing research there was so much allegedly thrown about. And I think, I mean, I know that you have to do that for legal reasons, but it's just like, we're past the allegedly phase of, of the abuse that he, that he enacted on, uh, on his um, female uh, uh, actors, you know, I mean, uh, Grace Kelly, just, just to uh, circle back uh, as far as casting goes, Grace Kelly was offered the part and was like, fuck no, I'm a princess now. And there's not a, chance in hell i'm working with hitchcock again um oh gosh who else uh they they offered it to audrey Hepburn. um they uh screen tested sandra d uh you know there were definitely there were uh, a couple of other uh actors that they wanted for the role but and i'm sure i'm sure you guys know this because you did your own episode but you know hitchcock sees tippy hedron in the commercial tracks her down she has no acting experience whatsoever but he has just got a colossal bone on for her and i mean it's 
that's why I think that the story behind the movie is more fascinating than the movie itself, because this is this is really a study in someone who is is giving into their compulsions to a, an alarming extent, and which is what she does. <laughs> you know, and, but basically makes a movie to try and get laid. You know, I got. I mean, sorry guys, we're, we're, I guess I kind of landed on it now. We're here now, so we might as well kind of unpack it. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, he screen oh, tests her. Oh, sorry, go uh, go ahead, Josh. Oh, no, I was totally just agreeing like with you, yeah. From everything I've her. read, he... Right, yeah. Yeah, so he screen <laughs> tests her not once, but twice. Once, you know, just for the studio to be like, yeah, yeah, she's good, she's good. Don't worry, she can't act, but, you know, I'm Alfred Hitchcock, and I'll show you what I can do. Um, then he screen tests her a second time, and this is um, on an empty set where the screen test, he tells her, this, I'm going to give you a martini, and then another martini, another martini, and I'm going to ask you questions as we go along until you're drunk, and this will be the screen test. And she is like, fuck, no, I'm not showing up for that. I mean, the great thing about Tippi Hedren is that for as much abuse that she did go through and assault – um, she really did stand her ground, and she fought against him at almost every turn for what she could as, you know, this ingenue working for Universal Studios under Alfred Hitchcock. I can't even imagine what that would have been like, you know, at 32 years old, a single mom with a daughter, you know, just to be really just preyed upon, just set upon by the, th this man, but she did mm -hmm. fight back. She really did. There are a, a lot of the accounts was that she said no, and she didn't show up, and she, you know, ran out of the limo when he assaulted her. I mean, there's there's so many stories to the to the point where Suzanne, Suzanne Plachette turned to her at one point and, and said, look, it's it's not like this. Like, this this guy's a different cat. It's It's not like this typically, you know? So again, I'm blathering on. I want to get I want to get your input. So is the Tippy Hedren and the Alfred Hitchcock of it all? What's your take on it? Oh, the horror stories of well, filmmaking. That is, like, yeah. yeah, and on top of everything you said, he put her in a lot of crazy situations, like tying the birds to her arm, like up in the attic where she got physically injured in the hospital. I cut. Um, but she must have at some point, you know, she did. She stood her ground, I think, won his respect because she went back and did one more movie with him, Marty. And I I think that was a better experience for her. So yeah. I think she, you know, at least stood her ground with him, which, you know, isn't saying much. It should have never happened to begin with. But I think she not won his respect, or maybe that is what it was. But, yeah, she stood her ground, kind of put her foot down and, showed him like you can't you're not gonna mess with me if we're gonna work together again then yeah you're gonna show some respect <laughs> yeah yeah no she definitely walked out uh, i think towards maybe after marnie then i guess at this point but she uh definitely walked into his office saying she's like i'm over this i'm out and he apparently tried you know berating her then you know like well you're under contract and and this and that and you know you can't afford probably not to work for me and yada 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 and she was just like fuck you do what you have to do and literally walked out and i th i think had to break her contract and everything but she yeah but like you said yeah she did it she didn't she's like you know you're not gonna you're not gonna have a i'm not gonna be under your thumb like i i could i don't care you know yeah so yeah uh, it's hard well, though when you love his films you know like you like i yeah. know like, you always say it to separate the art from the artist Oh boy, we, we come across this so much. Uh, you know, when Shannon and I started this podcast a year ago, you know, we got out of the gate and and by like the third or fourth film doing our research, we were like, oh, this is going to be fun. And then we were like, oh, this guy is fucking horrible. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> what is happening? And then that happened the next. We, we went on a month long run where every fucking director, and, yeah. and, and again, these are all guys. These are all guys behaving horribly. Every director for a month, we were like, oh, here's another piece of shit. Okay, here we go again, you know? And it, <laughs> it was so 
it's just so disheartening. Mm-hmm. But, you know, then I don't know, then we, you know, then we switched to female directors and everything got better <laughs> immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I will say, though, the most heartbreaking thing about it is that, uh, you know, Tippi Hedren um, signed a seven year contract. So not only could she and she won the Golden Globe for um, like, you know, uh, uh, Best New Actress uh, that year. So she's got some heat behind her and she's got some momentum and she can't do a damn thing because she signed a seven year contract. So if they don't want her acting in anything, that's not a universal picture. And of course, with Alfred Hitchcock going, you know, because she wouldn't sleep with him, she had, she had no recourse, but to make Marnie. And it was a better experience for her according to by all accounts because at that point he knew that he was not going to sleep with her but you know it 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 kind of killed the momentum of her career and then if you guys really want to you want to you know hear about um human animal trauma research the movie that she did called roar with a house full of fucking lions and tigers yeah (laughs) crazy (laughs) Oh my! Oh. Yeah, <laughs> really. Oh, the poor thing. Oh, Justine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at least, <laughs> at least when she was making this film, The Birds. So, like, obviously, they used uh, there was a lot of um, you know various uh, trained birds for you know various scenes, and I know there were there were two. I think they were both crows. Um, so she there was this one named Bud who apparently would visit Tippy in her bedroom, uh, not her bedroom, her, um, uh, the, the, her dressing room. Um, that he would visit her like every day that she was in there getting ready. And apparently he was a lovely bird and was like, apparently too nice. <laughs> so they never use bud in the film, <laughs> but there was another one that was supposed to work with, uh, with, with, uh, Rod Taylor more. And his name was Archie. And, 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 uh, like, it's so funny when you hear Rod Taylor talk about it, because he's like, I hated that bird, and that bird hated me. I don't know what it was. <laughs> but, like, he said, like, he would, like, walk into the studio, and Archie would be, like, up somewhere, and then he would literally just come down and try to, like, nip at Rod Taylor every day. <laughs> this is great. We finally found someone who doesn't want to fucking sleep with Rod Taylor. Yes. That's fantastic. All right? <laughs> this one's going out to Archie. <laughs> Love you, Archie. <laughs> but I just thought that all was the ladies and the birds <laughs> wanted to sleep with Rod Taylor on set. It was insanity. <laughs> yeah, maybe Archie was just jealous. That's I don't crazy. know. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, we'll we'll switch to the the latter half of the film. So now that our, our final hour is the true horror movie. There's a fantastic set piece, um, you know, with the gas station and the diner. Um, of course, everybody kind of turns on Tippy Hedren because they're like, who invited this whore to town who's bringing all this trouble? So it, it, it pretty much turns into Salem, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, yes. So, but that set piece that they did, I mean, uh, you know, when you have the explosion of the gas station, you're like, oh, okay, here we go now. Now we're now we're definitely, you know, we're we're in a different film now. And then from that point forward, I mean, it moves fairly quickly, you know, to to the the end you know the big ending the ambiguous ending um you know unfortunately we lose suzanne plachette she's protecting the kids fantastic scene with the kids running away you know i found out through the research that they had they 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 filmed that scene on location but then they wanted some some tighter shots so they brought a couple of kids into the studio and they had them on a gigantic treadmill and if a kid fell, they would just get whisked away. And they had mattresses set up, but they they didn't. It's not like they shut it off. They were just like, "Don't Eddie, you'll be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll get him an ice cream later." I imagine it's like on one of those like um, home TV like shows that Danny Tanner like <laughs> America's Funniest Home Videos. Like whoop. <laughs> I love that I know what you're talking about when you say Danny Taylor. Talking about? I remember that. <laughs> we finally get to we have a couple of we have a couple of, of, of moments of of sheer terror because I have to put myself in um the viewer 
1963. You know, these poor people have come out of psycho and they're seeing, um, you know, a toilet for the first time, but also a woman murdered in the shower. And then three years later, they're seeing a man with his eyes pecked out. So they must have been like, Alfred Hitchcock, what, you know, you got me again. But, you know, for 63, there's definitely enough terror there to to jar an audience. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of love, you know, I certainly don't love what happened to Tippi Hedren in the attic. You know, that's horrific. Still kind of scratching my head, like, why would you do that? But, you know, again, she's got to do it so we can get Tippi Hedren attacked by birds in the attic. That's why she does it. But like, you know, the the ending that they have... (laughs) of of them driving away and for 63 i'm kind of you know i'm thinking about it and i don't want to put you guys on the spot but i'm like an an ambiguous nihilistic ending like that does not feel typical by any means i could not think of one that had come before can think of plenty in the late 60s early 70s i mean shit in the 70s this is like damn near every horror movie ends nihilistically I couldn't think of anything before. Can you guys? Night of the Living Dead. Oh, uh, shit. All right. Right out of the gate, you get me. <laughs> oh, wait, but that was 68. Well, I that feel was like I, know. Gonna, I was just going to say, like, I, I'm, I'm just rattling off, like, 60s. Like, I, I can't think of, like, yeah. I even love in um in the birds like when she's sitting outside the schoolhouse and how the birds kind of, like, accumulate behind her. How it just kind of like all builds up and it's very foreboding and the music yes. and the kids singing and yeah, just kind of like to to echo what you're saying, like there hadn't really been something like that. It yeah. just kind of caused a certain terror and tension inside you. There's actually like no music at all, like throughout the yeah. film. I mean, you just, I mean, yeah, you hear the kids singing. And that's about it. Other than that, it was just like the like the synth noises that they created, like to have the birds like as they you know start attacking and doing whatever they're doing. So, yeah, yeah, so they don't have a composer for this film. It's a sound consultant. Yeah, he did so many like unconventional things like that in this movie, like the mm-hmm. ending being open ended. No music, no score, not even like you know music on the radio. What do they call that? Like diegetic music like mm. the only thing you get yeah. is the kids singing that song over and over, and over. yeah yeah know, it's haunting in itself <laughs> but I that think... scene is really yeah. one of my favorites yeah it's very creepy i kind of love that um this mm. movie uh resonates now in 2024 because of of well not you know hitchcock and it's a class car film but edith head doing the costumes and doing Tippi Hedren's iconic, you know, that's the only thing she wears in the movie. They had six of those. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. They had six of them made. And I just, you know, now it's, it's like my favorite Halloween costume when someone wears that and they have the birds attached. I just yeah. love it. But I mean, again, this time period with Edith head, you're just like, come on. I, I was just telling Shannon, Um, They release uh, Rear Window on the big screen, and I saw it Wednesday. And Grace Kelly walks in to Jimmy Stewart's Greenwich Village apartment, and she's fucking radiant. I mean, and there's that's Edith Head. I mean, that's Grace Kelly, but that's Edith Edith Head with with her costuming. And it's just, I kind of love it. I absolutely love it. Her exhibit is like right you're now, in a uh, I, right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, Josh. What I was bought that? a bunch of her sketches and had them. I'm looking right now at a sketch that Edith Head did of Tippy Hendren and the birds. Wow. They're doing a, they have at the Oklahoma City Art Museum right now, a big exhibit. It's all Edith Head's costumes. And oh, that's awesome. so I bought a bunch of her sketches and they, I they're hanging on my wall. One of them's Tippy Hendred and the birds. Oh, I'm jealous. That's, That's fantastic. Awesome. <laughs> oh, I love that. So, gang, we I, I I think we 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 pretty much did the birds justice. Now we're gonna we're just gonna transition to our three questions for you both. We're not gonna. It, they're easy questions, so I don't want you guys. I don't want you guys to get nervous. What's your social security number? <laughs> what is it? I don't know it. 
So I switched the question. So Shannon doesn't even know what I'm going to ask, but I switched yeah. them up. Shannon, the first one is the one we always do. So okay. Justine, we're going to start with you and then Josh, you're okay. next. So the first question is, what's the scariest movie you've ever seen? Hmm. Uh, I don't, I don't know about the scariest, but my, or favorite. my favorite, my favorite is the exorcist. That's also the scariest movie ever made. So <laughs> one and done. So, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. It could be, it God. could, it could be, yeah, it's freaking scary. So yeah. All right, Josh, on to you. Scariest movie you've ever seen. Well, it. I'm not sure if I saw it now at this time in my life, it might be the scariest. It's still one of my favorites. And it's one when I first saw it as a kid, scared the hell out of me. And I, it's become a favorite, but the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Sure. Something about like oh. the design of Freddy. The, yeah, the con oh, yeah. you, you can't sleep. Like that's so terrifying. Yeah. So oh, I'm going to wow. go with Nightmare on Elm Street. All right. Great. There's no bad answer, but great answers, both of you. All yeah. right. You, you, you're doing very well. Yeah. <laughs> okay now now i'm going to switch things up on shannon she's like oh shit what is he going to ask them okay the second question is ready okay justine we'll start with you josh will go to you okay. justine who's your horror crush oh, i'm looking around at all of my pictures <laughs> momentarily like eli roth Ooh. okay all right oh boy okay all right josh what about you Okay, it's Justine. What's his name? We've met him at a Frightmare Weekend, Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two. He plays Grady in Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two. Oh, just Robert Russler and Russler, yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two. I don't know yeah, I mean that was. I'm gonna have to he's the best it. friend of the guy. All he's right, his, I yeah, love he's love the it. best friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 80s Robert. Oh, I love yeah. it. 80s I Robert Russler. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Deep dive. Yeah. So both of my Nightmare on Elm Street answers, but <laughs> I love it. I'm seeing the theme. Yeah. I wonder if the yeah. next answer is part three. Look at yeah. what. <laughs> oh. All right. Third, third question. Same order. This one's a little lengthier, so 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 bear with me. Okay. Like the birds, if the world were taken over by an animal species, what would be the most terrifying? For you, Ooh. Uh, spiders. Yeah, yeah. Josh, what about I you? Hate, I hate them so much. I hate them. <laughs> are you are you that meme where the house is on fire and you're like, I got the spider. I got him. I got him. I just I hate them so much. Oh. <laughs> Josh, what do you Josh, got? Mine would be snakes. I, I don't like snakes. Okay. I'm with Josh. Yeah, yeah, I'm with Josh. You guys, I have heard I Josh. He has like a he has An like amphibian. a vocal register. It gets so high when he sees a snake. It is like <laughs> like a Disney princess that's speaking to all the birds and the bees like out there. That's like what happens whenever Josh sees a snake. It's like, <laughs> like it's insanity. <laughs> Josh, I'll do you one better. When I see a snake, this is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> just no, full paint. <laughs> no, no scream comes out of these lips. I just think. Snake scare the living <laughs> bit out of me. Now, Justine, I can do spiders, but not like, I mean, let's be honest. If more than like three spiders were coming toward me, game over. <laughs> but I could, I, could do, I could do spiders. <laughs> but these questions are actually new to Shannon. I'm going to go back. Shannon, who's your horror crush? Oh, well, we've talked about my... So he's been in, in horror movies since, and, and you know he's a, uh, a, a confidant in horror movies as well, even though he's not really known for horror movies. But this is my my all-time, you know, you know who my all-time celebrity crush is. Oh, uh, yo, don't put me on the spot, because I totally forgot. I, oh, well, how does it feel for you? <laughs> oh, it's horrible. Yeah. Oh, I feel bad about all the things I do to you now. This feels horrible. <laughs> 
wait, wait. Um, your all-time horror crush is 100% uh, Ralph Macchio. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Who is it? Elijah Wood. Oh, shit, I knew that. Oh. This upsets me because I knew that. So then, so because me and him are like the same age, so I literally had the crush on him when we were both since like I was like nine years old. Uh, ever since seeing like maybe Radio Flyer was probably like the first one, and then it was like every movie I ever saw him in, I just always, always, yeah, I always liked him. And then, and then he went on to do Sin City, and that was a whole new character. Um. But yeah, and then, and then now he's recently been in Yellow Jackets, where he plays a very, you know, nihilistic. Not nihilistic, I don't think, but, you know. He's not a, he's not like the good guy next door anymore, you know? So I'm like, he's taking on like more fun roles. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he just, yeah. That just, that started when I was nine, and it just never changed it. So, there you go. Josh, were you saying that you met him? Oh no, she mentioned the movie Radio Flyer. And oh. I was like, oh, deep dive or deep yeah. Cover. I know that yeah. movie. I grew up watching the flyer too. And I didn't think anybody else had seen that movie. Yeah. Oh my I god, mean, are you kidding me? Oh, <laughs> kind of a what is it, like a family drama thriller, if you think about it. If you want to throw yeah. that uh, in there. It's it's a pretty messed uh, up movie. All right, now full disclosure. Yeah. <laughs> Shannon loves spiders and loves snakes. So I'm curious. We're all gets taken over by an animal species, what's it going to be that scares you? Me? Yeah. You're pretty badass. <laughs> um, well, I mean, birds are in the air. So, I mean, and, fun, and random fun facts, too, is that they have actually found, um, like, a, you know, I guess our ancestors, if you will, you know, like, um, you know, cavemen, um, uh, uh, skulls, if you will, with puncture wounds going in this way. Which means, which means we were definitely picked up by gigantic birds at one point. <laughs> so that scares the shit out of me. Yeah, I don't like that. For that sure. Scary. That's a scary Yeah, yeah that's old... a scary thought. But, uh, uh, yeah, I guess just because they, yeah, I might have to stick with birds. Like I said, cause it's more like because they're, they're aerial and, you okay. know, like. Because what are you going to do? Like, if, if you fly in a plane, they're going to attack your plane. That's scary as shit. Um, okay. You know, yeah. It's, yeah. They were I'm dinosaurs. With, I, that's right. Yeah. I'm with Josh, though. It's it's snakes. It's snakes. You're, you're all wrong. It's snakes. <laughs> <laughs> they're adorable. I don't know. Oh. I know. I, you're trying. You're trying to get me to see the good thing about snakes, but man, it's hard. It's yeah. very hard. <laughs> so, gang, that's that's basically it. But this is the point of the podcast before we wrap everything up, where we actually hand the keys over to you, and we would love the both of you to promote anything and everything that you'd want. Um, just you know, uh, let us know where we can find you, and uh, yeah, just here you go. Here, here are the keys. Well, you can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts under Scream Queens Horror Road Trip Podcast. And we also do a YouTube show called Blind Spot Reactions. It's just a, a movie reaction channel where we watch movies we've never seen before. And we're on all the social medias. We're on Patreon. So just wherever you like to hang out and get your social media or your podcast, that's where you can find us. Fantastic. Love thank it. you. Thank you both so much for coming on. This was an absolute pleasure. Cannot wait to hear future episodes. When you you both need to do more. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait between episodes. You both need to do more, but there's I know we try between like the YouTube and the podcast. It's like every week, every month. Ugh. We got to do more, more content. Real <laughs> I want you two yeah. to have to have a show. I want you two to have a show. That's oh what I want. Oh my god, we would love that. That's dream. <laughs> like a travel channel or road trip yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. 
That'd be Let's great. Get the dollar bills on that real quick. <laughs> I'm putting it out there. I'm putting it out there into the ether. You Yay. two not only need, but deserve to have your own travel show, horror <laughs> theme travel show. I mean, yeah, I'm just putting it out there. But yes. thank, thank you both so much for coming on tonight. Yay. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I can't wait till we could do this again. Thank you. We've enjoyed yeah. it so thank much. Thank you so much for having me. We love your show. And this is so much fun. Thank you so much, Thank guys. You. Take care. Thanks again for coming on. Yeah, the best to you both. Thank you. Thank you. you. Uh, All right, Sinner. And that's a cut. Hey, you just listened to the latest episode of Sinful Cuts. We hope you enjoyed listening to it just as much as we enjoyed making it. If you did, we would be thrilled if you'd head on over to Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Leave us a rating and a review. We take them seriously, and we check them all. They go a long way toward not only making the podcast better, but also to get the word out on Sinful Cuts. We're also on YouTube. We would love it if you'd subscribe to us over there. Then you can watch our sweet little faces as we do what we love, talking about horror movies. Until next week, when we're going to have a brand new chiller for you, please put kindness out into the world and get your scare on.